Good morning, guys. So what we got here is an early AM, PM, 14 ACX. And uh, we're going to get this ready. Got lots of junk in there to clean out, so let's get this bad boy cleaned. And then we'll fire it up. Alright. So, of course, for the new guys out there, always check your lugs. Your terminals are tied down, nice and tight. Okay, when uh, removing this top, you basically got to take these two wires off the contactor and your fan side on the uh, capacitor, and uh, that'll get you your top off. All right, so this one's full of sh full of junk in there. A lot of guys don't pay attention to this. Okay, this has got to be cleaned out. Some techs will just come, take your pressures, clean the outside of the condenser. It doesn't work like that. It's people pay hard-earned money for our maintenance. So what you want to do is get rid of all that. Because you have drain ports in there, right? So when the water goes in there, it needs to drain. It's not going to drain nice when this is full of gunk. Like, look at that. So I'm going to clean this all out, get that emptied. Got the inside cleaned out, going to hose her down. Tons of... <clears throat> Get all this junk out. That's looking nasty. It looks like it hasn't been done in a while. Let me get this cleaned up. For the new guys out there, you want to hose inside to out. See how it pushes out all that dirt like that? That's how you do it. Don't be lazy. Take the top off, get it done properly. You understand that, boy? See those drain ports down there? See those buddy? You see how the water goes through? With all that junk in there, it won't drain properly. So, push it out and you can rinse the other side. And pine noodles stuck in there. We'll pull those out individually. How that pushes that out. There we go from top down. Okay. We got everything cleaned out, washed out. You guys saw how you want to go from this end, the new guys, and inside out, and it puts all that dirt out. And you simply want to get rid of all the big stuff on this end. This condenser decided to turn into a porcupine. These things are annoying as hell, they'll just stick in there. I mean, try and get, get them out, but I mean, you're not gonna sit here all day trying to get each individual one out. You want the big stuff. Basically, you want that air to get through there. So, looking a lot healthier right now. So, I'll put this back together, let it dry fire it up. 
All right, while we're waiting for this coil to dry, we're gonna do a bench test on the cap. Redfish meter by Sepco IDV M550. So let's do this with one hand. Which can always be a pain in the ass. Alright, so we're gonna check our fan side. 4.95 out of 5, so we're good. And then I'm gonna check my Herm side, Hermetic, which is 35 out of 35, so this capacitor is good. Now most of the time, not much in this case, but a good way for the new guys to tell, usually your common will have four pins, your Hermetic will have three, and your fan side will have one. So if you ever forget that, uh, you could go by that rule typically. Uh, this one, for some odd reason, the common only has three terminals, and the Hermetic has three terminals. But most of the time I'll see four for the common, three for the Hermetic, and one for the fan. It's clean. So this cap's good. Alright guys, so, got my devices connected. Uh, this might be a little bit wet, so I'm gonna let it run for a bit. Outdoors, about 55, so we got some low ambient temperatures outdoors. But if we look at our brushers, okay, they're on the button. CTO, uh, condensing temperature over ambient, typically on these Lennox units, 14 to 16 sear, are about 10 degrees above ambient. So we're almost right there. Uh, Subcooling, a little bit lower. Looks like it's in superheats all right. So I'm gonna go inside and check the uh, indoor temperature on here. And by the time we get back outside, that should be nice and dry. We'll go from there. Uh, approach is right on the button. So Lennox says anything below 65 to go by approach. Okay, so my approach is in the green. I think the approach on this is calling for Five, we're right on the money, okay? If we look at our outdoor air, a little cool. Head pressure looks like it's on target. We still gotta go inside and get our numbers for the indoor. But looking good so far. Hey right, guys, a little dark down here but I'm gonna put my return probe side. I tuck it right in the filter there. Sorry about the lighting. I know there's not much. We got a TX on this bad boy. Now I'm gonna tap into the supply side, which should be good right about here. Oh, she's dark. I should have brought my light. I'll put a hole right here. So we'll let those stabilize. Temp split's still coming up. We got a clean filter. Next thing to check is going to be Airflow. Unbelievable. Two ton at 1250. So let's correct that. And I'll show you how to do that. All right, so here's the dip switch blower chart. Okay, this is an ACM motor, DC motor. So we adjust airflow through dip switches. If we look here, okay, I got a uh, 70,000 BTU furnace. And we're looking ideally for about 800, okay? So factory default, 
scroll over to two stage, second stage cooling speed should be on low. Alright, so now what you do is you find this, this is a Linux manual, and we go to low. You see there? Dip switch 5 is on, 6 is on. switches have never been touched look at that fresh so let's get that changed now remember your ABC's all right airflow before cooling if you don't have your airflow set you can't set your charge correctly so I got five and six put on now we should correct that airflow so let's fire this up and watch the process again all right guys so I adjusted the airflow on that unit which got everything lined up a lot better than what it was um, pressures were bang on now my probes disconnected that's why we don't have the inside temp but I had a great temp split down there and I took some pictures which I'll post on the video uh, but then the customer asked that he put the airflow back to normal so it's an older home and he has trouble getting air up there so I had to put him back I don't know what you guys normally advise to customers in that case. He said he's not getting any cool air on the top floor and uh, has specifically requested that we keep uh, the airflow the way it was. On the other side, subcooling charge looks good. This is nice and dry. We got it all cleaned up. No issues whatsoever. And um, that's it for today. So thanks. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys do in that instance where you want to correct for proper 400 CFM per ton, but the customer's request is to have more. Customer, at the end of the day, it's his system. We do what he wants. Um, either than that, guys, this is Hoser. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. A little final touch. I like to use some pledge just on here. Give her the old good, as Steve Lab would say, the old Gundy, baby. Give her some of that love. Get all that gunk off there. And then she's golden. Some guys use polish. Whatever makes it look new, guys. Keep the money coming back, baby. Just like that. So this is Ozer signing off. Nice little tip. See ya. I'm just sitting here